Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you guys my step-by-step -step process in doing a short gel -like set on myself. These are my nails and I'm also going to be making a press on for my broken nails so stay till the end to see that. But I'm just going in and clipping down my natural nails. Um, they were grown out a bit. I did just take off a set so there's a little bit of gel still left on my nails which I always do that anytime I take a set off or file it. I always file it down so I don't soak it off. I just file it and then I leave a thin layer of gel on my natural nails so that I don't have to take them all the way down because the gel will just stick to more gel product once you put it on. And then I'm just shaping them up. I'm kind of filing my nails into kind of like a really short almond or round shape. I do this because whenever you apply gel tips, you kind of want the sides of your nails to be tapered in because if they're not, they're gonna kind of stick out and sometimes it'll make the tip fit really weird on your nail if your nails are too long or if they are hanging off the sides. So I'm just shaping them up with a, this is a, um, this is a low grit file. Low grit, no, I'm sorry, low grit is coarse. This is a high grit file for your natural nails. Make sure that you're not using a low grit on your natural nails please make sure that you're using an emery board because if you use an acrylic file it's just going to kind of shred your nails and it's not super healthy to do that um, because it just kind of grinds them down this more so just kind of smooths them and sands them down so that you're not causing any damage to them but yeah just make sure that I mean, if you're doing this you can do this on your yourself and also on your clients so um, but always make sure that you ask your clients if they want their nails to be cut down or whatever. Um, just make sure you're not doing it without asking. And this is the file, the e-file that I'm using right now. Um, this is a Melody Susie. I do have this in my Amazon storefront, but uh, it's not my favorite nail drill in the world. It's definitely good for beginners and someone who's working on themselves. But, um, if you are going to be a full-time nail tech, I suggest, man, um, investing in the Manny Pro KP. It's a wonderful drill. I love it. I need to get it fixed. But anyway, I'm just going in with my sanding band. This is a medium sanding band and I'm just removing the shine from the growth part of my nail. And then on the top of my nail where there's still gel product, I'm kind of filing it down just to make sure that it's super flush to my nail just to make the application of the gel tip a little bit easier and so that I don't have to put as much gel in there. Um, sometimes if it's a little bit thick, you'll have to put you'll have to put less gel just so that you're not making the nail look super bulky because there's already product on your nail, if that makes sense. But yeah, I'm just using a pretty low speed, um, probably around, I would say four to six RPMs. Um, you can go a little faster on the part of your nail where there's product, but I just suggest using a low speed, especially if you're a beginner. Um, you don't want to file down too many layers of your nails. You just want to make sure that you're using it very lightly and you're not using too much pressure because you can cause damage to yourself or your clients using the sanding band. And now I'm taking a tapered cuticle bit and I'm going in and just removing any dead skin that is on my nail plate. Um, pretty much the cuticle is what I'm doing. I don't really use cuticle nippers on myself because I don't really have a lot of thick skin around my nail beds. Um, some people do, some people don't. I, I just don't. So I just always take the cuticle bit and just go around on my nail plate and just remove anything that might be there. And just to kind of push my cuticle back so that I have more surface area on my natural nails. And now I'm just taking my 90% isopropyl alcohol and I'm cleansing and dehydrating my nails with this. So I don't use a dehydrator that's like in a bottle. I always just use 90% alcohol. That's what works for me. And now I'm getting my lamp out. And these are the nail extensions that I'm using today. I got these off of Amazon. I will have these linked in my Amazon storefront. These are actually new and I like them a lot. Um, they are definitely a good tip. One of the best tips that I've found on Amazon. Now I'm just sizing them. Please make sure that when you're sizing the nail that you're not having to push it down to fit the nail. You want there to be a little bit of room and gap between your nail and the 
gel extension nail just so that you have room to put the gel and to apply it onto your nail. Make sure it's fitting from sidewall to sidewall. Now I'm taking my gelish foundation. Um, if you've watched any of my videos, you know this is my holy, holy grail product that I use all the time. I'm just applying it as a gel base onto my natural nails and I'm going to cure that in my lamp for 60 seconds. And Jellish was so nice. They literally sent me these because they saw my video where I was talking about the Jellish foundation. And they sent me these new Jellish Flex um, polish, gel polishes they have. And they're kind of like a, they're for structured manicures. Um, but honestly, I feel like the consistency of these gels is great for gel extension and i'm taking one of these today and i'm going to be using it to apply my gelix tips so this is the one that i chose i believe this is the like nude pink um it just matched it just seemed to match my nail color pretty well but i'm just going in and painting the inside of the tip with a thin layer of the gel and then i'm adding um, a good bit of the gel at the base and I'm just gonna apply it onto my nail Start at the cuticle and push the gel to the free edge of your nail Do this pretty slowly so that you're not having any extra gel squeeze out and I'm using my lamp um, to Flash cure it and I also added some gel in the tip just to extend the color out I wasn't sure exactly what length I wanted yet but again, I'm just painting a thin layer of the gel inside of the tip, and then I'm adding more gel at the base where the cuticle is. Um, that is the gel that we're gonna need for thickness, okay? So again, placing it at the cuticle and pushing it down, bringing the gel to the free edge and carrying it in my lamp. A little tip to avoid heat spikes is to move the nail in and out of the lamp and see um i'm putting the gel inside of the tip just so that the nude goes all the way to the top um this was actually such a good hack because now i don't have to go in and paint the nails um so that's basically taking out a whole nother step um which saves a lot of time because usually i would just put these on with clear um gel foundation um and then go in with a nude gel polish and paint them before i do my design but this definitely takes out probably another five to ten minutes so it's pretty good i really liked how this came out so again just painting underneath and making sure that you flash cure it again so once all of these are done i am going to fully cure it in my big lamp for 60 seconds just to make sure that everything is nice and cured and nothing is still wet and this color is pretty sheer like it has a good opaqueness to it but it's pretty sheer so the lamp doesn't have any issue with curing it um, it goes through just fine my nails feel amazing and very hard and tight like they're not going anywhere okay <laughs> And same thing with my pinky, just going in, curing that, making sure that all the gel is evenly on there. You can see it has a sheerness to it. And then, you know, like I said, curing it for 60 seconds. Now I'm going in and cutting them down. I am doing short. Um, I miss my long nails, but unfortunately I can't do that right now because one of my nails is broken and I can't deal with one short nail and a bunch of long ones. It's, I, I just, I can't do it. Um, I already feel like I'm missing a finger because I've been having to wear a band-aid every single day because I don't want to scare my clients because my finger is scary and I'm actually going to show it to you at the end of this video, which I don't know why I'm doing that, but I am. Anyway, now I'm going in with my nail file and I'm just sharpening my square shape. Um, believe it or not, filing on my own hands is so much harder than filing a client. Like, it's just very awkward. Look, I have to, like, put my finger over my other finger just to be able to file the top of it. I don't know. My hands just have to be in weird positions every time I do this. And also trying to film and file your nails is kind of difficult. But I did it. Um, I'm using a 100-100 grit creation nail file. These are my favorite nail files. I get them from my nail supply store which will be linked to below. You can get them at Trans Nail Supply or Happy Nails. And I believe they're like 
6 to $12 for a pack of 50 which is an amazing, amazing deal. Um, please don't buy your nail files off Amazon unless you're just buying for personal use. But honestly, even for personal use, it's so much cheaper to just buy a pack of 50 than it is to buy a pack of 10 on Amazon, which is crazy. But anyway, yeah, I'm just making sure that I have a really sharp square. This is what they look like. They literally look like I just put on acrylic nails. Like <sighs> These are probably some of my favorite nails that I've done on myself in a minute because I swear I only do my nails every four to five weeks because I get lazy and I don't want to do it. It's not that I get lazy. It's just that when you're doing nails all day, you know, sometimes you don't really feel like doing your own. But I'm taking my sanding band and I'm just kind of filing down underneath any of the gel that was like sticking out and also kind of sharpening the shape a little bit with the sanding band. Now I'm taking a five in one bit. This is an old coarse bit. Okay, I do recommend using a fine if you're going to use a five in one bit for this, but I've just had this nail file. I mean, this e-file for a long time. I used to use it to take down acrylic, so it's pretty... Um, it's pretty grinded out basically like it's it's not that sharp so that's why i use it to go around my cuticle bit and just remove any of the gel tip that's kind of sticking up like where you can see there's a difference between your nail and the tip i go in and file all of that down to where it's super flush to my nail you can see how flush it is because you can literally see my um if you don't know what the little white thing at the base of your nail is called it's called your lanula um it's a little white part where your nail grows out anyway you can see that so that was a little education tip for you <laughs> but anyway you can see that so my nails are pretty flush and I feel like this color looks so natural um and I'm glad that I can still kind of see my free edge like underneath but anyway this let me show you that this was before filing and then that's after it's crazy um I completely forgot what I was just saying, but now I'm going in and buffing my nails, um, just removing the shine and taking down any of the sharpness on the tips of them, but just make sure that your the top is completely matte and buffed out because this is what's going to keep the gel polish on strong. Now I'm cleansing again with alcohol and look at these, just look at how flush it is. That's what I was saying. They're just super flush and I like how I can see my free edge so that whenever I go in to paint my French tip like this, which is the design that we're doing, um, so I can see it and I can kind of trace my natural free edge so that the French tip looks a little more natural, you know what I mean? But this is what I'm using for the look. I'm using Madame Glam Cat Eye Polish White, um, a metal gel, a dotting tool, and a liner brush. So I'm just taking a little bit of the white and putting it on my um beautiful palette here which is just the lid of an acrylic jar and now i'm taking my liner brush and i'm just cre starting to create my french tip so we're about to be here for a minute because i take my time whenever i do my french tips um, i start by lining the very top of the nail and then i line down the sides and then i start to curve them and bring them in and just slowly meet um meet them in the center basically to create that arch and that curve um like i said it does take me a little while to do this because i'm just i don't like when it looks crooked i try to make sure that everything looks seamless and put together a little bit of a perfectionist when it comes to doing french tips um i feel like it's just easy to see when you when you kind of mess up french tips or if it's crooked or whatever so I just do my best to make sure that it's nice and center. So I'm just going back and forth with my liner brush on each side and kind of bringing the paint in little by little. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to explain how I do this, but yeah, I'm just little by little just lining the paint until it looks right. And I'm just kind of looking at my other nail just to make sure that they're the same length. But anyway, I'm just going to let you watch the rest of this part and then I'll come right back.
now I'm taking my Madame Glam cat eye gel polish. I'll have this link below. I can't remember the name of it, but I believe it's like the perfect cat eye or something, but I'm taking this and I'm going over the white. I cured all of the white in my lamp for 60 seconds. Um, so I'm just taking my sharper brush and going over the white, which is cured and um, just basically tracing it, just filling it in. Um, this part really doesn't take as long. I was, I feel like I was kind of being slow on my thumb though, but the other ones went by pretty fast. But you're just gonna outline that and then you are gonna wanna make sure that you do have the magnet um, because that is what's gonna kind of bring the cat eye polish to life. It's pretty like this, but it looks kind of dull in my opinion. So when you take the magnet, you're just gonna kind of place it on the top and then on the sides and you're gonna be able to see the particles like move and kind of see when it looks really velvety and that's kind of the look that i was going for is just to kind of have all of the silver shimmer in the middle so it kind of gives like this glass marble effect but you can play around with it the good thing is you know it doesn't dry until you put it in the lamp so you can keep kind of moving the magnet around however you like it um, I'm glad you're able to see like all the little fine glitters be able to move around, but you see it kind of looks reflective. I guess that's a better word to put it. On camera, it looks really reflective, but in person, it looks a little more marbly. Um, but yeah, you can just play around with the cat eye tool. And now I'm taking my chrome gel. I got this off of Amazon too. And I'm taking my liner brush and I'm just going to create these little stripes. So I'm doing two stripes next to each other and I put them on opposite sides of the nail. So wherever I put one, I'm just going to put the other one on the opposite side. They don't have to be perfect. This is something that you honestly shouldn't even have to think about. This is a super quick, simple little top design. Um, just two little lines next to each other and have the other one going a separate way. But this this gel paint has honestly changed the game for anyone who's wanting silver chrome designs on their nails like instead of having to do chrome powder this is a lifesaver i wish there was every single color in this liner gel and it's super thin so a lot goes a long way i mean a lot goes a long way <laughs> a little goes a long way it's very fine and very pigmented it's a beautiful gel just be careful with it because it is very very liquidy so you could spill it i spilled it literally the first day i got it and i scooped up all of my gel and i also cure it in my lamp for 60 seconds so that's another thing i cure each color so i cure the after i do the silver i cure it and then now i'm going in with the white and i'm doing the same exact thing and once I finish with that, I'm going to cure it in my lamp for 60 seconds. So you're curing each layer as you go. Don't work over wet gel polish because it's going to run together. It's going to bleed. So always make sure that you're curing after each color layer, if that makes sense. So yeah, just taking my liner brush and doing the same thing, putting the white lines on and making sure that the other one is across from it on the opposite side. Um... But yeah, just have fun with this. Don't think too hard about it. Um, this is a fun, easy design that anyone can do. And it's kind of relaxing whenever you get to this point. <laughs> because the French tip isn't too relaxing for me. I feel like I'm holding my breath when I'm trying to do it. Um, who else can relate? French tip. And you know, people come in, they're like, I just want something simple. Just a French tip. And I'm like, all right, here we go. Did I have too much coffee? I don't know. But anyway, now I'm taking my dotting tool after I cured the white and I'm going back in with my silver and doing the little dots. Um, this doesn't have to be a certain type of way either. Just put the dots on one of the sides of the lines, either on the left or the right. Um, just do make sure whenever you go in with the other color that you're not like putting the dots right next to each other, I would kind of space them out. So there's a little bit of a stipulation there that I guess I followed, but honestly, these are your nails. You can do whatever you want to them. Unless you have a client, make sure you're doing whatever they want. <laughs> so yeah, now I cured all the silver and then I'm going in with the white and doing that. And this is gonna be our last step before I do my top coat. But this design is super fun and I love how it turned out. I, 
actually have been loving these 90s 2000 nails like I'm so happy they're coming back because they're adorable and now I'm taking my um top coat it's a non-wipe top coat this is by I gel beauty I believe um it's just their non-wipe top coat and going in and covering everything up making sure that there are no spots you know just want to make sure you're putting a nice thin layer of top coat on there don't put too thick of a top coat because it's more likely to peel off if you do that but this is what they look like after they're cured and now i'm going in with my cuticle oil this cuticle oil bottle is from amazon it i've had this bottle since i started but the oil that's inside of it is actually a refill from my nail supply store but it smells really good and i just go in and rub that in around my cuticles and on my fingers because the alcohol dries them out and this is what they look like i am obsessed with them um but now i'm going in and i'm making the press on for my poor little crippled nail okay i'm just doing the same exact thing i just used like a sticky um nail a sticky nail sticker i guess that's what you would call it for press ons to hold my press on down onto the little stand because I don't have any putty so had to result to that but same thing going in with my silver curing it going in with my white and curing it but yeah this little stand is from Amazon it's like a million years old I really need to get another one because it's super stained up from airbrush and paint and broken um but I'm curing everything with my little lamp um I just didn't feel it was necessary to put it in the big one the little small LED light works just fine. Um, I kind of wish I would have done the pink base first just so that I could see the design better because it was kind of, the lights were like really bright. So trying to see this, the white and the silver was just like a little bit difficult. But anyway, now I'm top coating everything after everything's been cured and just curing my top coat as well. I'm using the same exact top coat. Now I'm going back in with my foundation flex and I'm going to paint the inside of the nail with this just like I did with my gel tips and I am making sure that this is kind of thick because there is a thick amount of gel in the ones that are that I already put on so I'm just making sure that the thickness is is right so that it you know has a little bit of stability and it's not going to break but this is what it looks like so cute <laughs> And I'm just curing that for like 30 to 60 seconds. And now I'm taking a matte base coat and I'm putting this on the inside. So I'm not using a shiny one. I'm using a matte one because I am going to be using the little sticky press-on tabs to put this on. So I feel like it will stick way better to the matte than it will to the shiny. Because the shiny, it'll just kind of peel off easily. But this is what it looks like. Little replica. I feel like I did a pretty good job. Get ready. Jump scare. Um, this is what my finger looks like. It is um, very sad, but it's came a long way because my nail was completely gone. So it's grown out a pretty good bit, but I got some more months to go before she's completely healed. But I just took some PhD Hydrator Bond. Um, and just to kind of dry out the area make sure there's no oils or whatever and these are the little sticky tabs that i was talking about um the little press on tabs i'm not going to use glue or gel because i do not want to cause any damage to my already damaged nail so just going to be using little sticky tabs and keeping them in my purse um so that i can just put it on if i'm going out or whatever because i'm honestly tired of having a band-aid there it's not pretty it's not cute but it worked um it's not the sturdiest thing but it's on there good enough um and if i were to hit it it wouldn't hurt because it's just a little sticky tab so yeah i'm happy that i can put something there now because y'all i've been honestly i felt like i've been missing a finger but this is what they look like i made it it, it should have been a little bit shorter but it's okay it's okay it's, you're not gonna be able to notice unless you're like super close but yeah, this is what they look like. Um, I really hope that you try out this design or I hope you learned something from this video. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, this is the final look. I feel like they turned out super cute and just chrome, silver. Like um, I've really been digging that lately. And I also did my toes to match. Aren't they cute? Thank you for watching.